Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, for nerds, by nerds, hanging out with a couple of nerds. Scott Garibay. I'm Ted. And today we are going to do a terrible train where we're talking about cemeteries and gravestones. Before we get into that though, jump down to the description below, sign up for Nerdarchy, the newsletter. It's a great way to get weekly gaming tips as well as learn how to game with us. So uh, I'll jump this one in. So I, I was very blessed recently to go to Boston, Massachusetts. I rode my bicycle all over that city. I saw all those pictures. Uh, Indeed, yes. Yeah. And uh, I saw an awesome graveyard. It was in, right in the middle of Boston City. It's called the Granary Burial Ground. Samuel Adams, Ben Franklin's parents, uh, a whole bunch of uh, Paul Revere, a whole bunch of American patriots were, wow. were buried there. It was epic, right? And uh, so me and my bicycle got to see it. We were excited. And uh, it really made me think about gravestones. The, the blue and, beast? Is that what you yes, call it? Yes, the yeah. blue beast. Exactly, yeah. And that's that's my iron horse when I go out for exploration, <laughs> right? So trying to live D&D out, right? Uh, maybe so, pony. Maybe iron miniature Shetland pony. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. My, uh, my mountain bike, it's oversized. It's really large. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, basically, uh, so one of the things I just... Um, so when I was looking at those gravestones, I was thinking gravestones are a big part of Dungeons and Dragons, and there's a lot of opportunity around adventure. So one of the ideas I had right out of the gate is uh, two different paths, uh, consecration and desecration. So your player characters uh, are coming, you know, they come across uh, this terrain, which is um, e either it could be a single gravestone. So somebody's buried in an area, there's a gravestone there. And someone is consecrating it, so they come across. Let, let's yeah. do. Let's just add graves as well. Just oh yeah, in general. So, yeah. So you you come across, uh, you know, a graveyard. You have you know graves there, and someone is standing in front of a. a you have a player character, probably a villager, and they're going to consecrate that ground where they're going there, and they're taking the time to bring flowers or to pour out a beer, you know, or, um, holy they, water. yeah, ex holy water. Exactly. And, um, they're, he did they're, say beer. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea of your player characters encountering someone interacting with a grave. And I think that there's a lot of opportunity there because one, they can talk to that person and two, they can ask questions about who's buried there. Yeah. What happened? Why that? Yeah, exactly. And as soon as you start talking about why is this person in the grave, um, it, it can become important, and if the person is consecrating that grave, that that might be an opportunity for the players to just speak, simply speak, you mm -hmm. know, to that to that that non-player character and say, you know, um, we're sorry for your loss. And I also think it's interesting too if you want to if you want to fight murder hoboism, this might be a good, good example. Well, yeah. also if you have you know religious characters, a paladin or you know a, a cleric in the group, that would also yeah. fall into that as well. I, I've used cemeteries and graves in my games. Uh, one of uh, my earliest adventures with with um, our group was uh go ghosts they encountered a ghost and what it was was someone you know uh it was a couple who would, were murdered and they wanted to be they, they they wanted their bones to be found like the party went through all this thing all these things trying to fight the ghost but there was nothing to fight you Ooh, know you know yeah. they just they they, they they needed their bones to be found and they needed to be consecrated and, and laid the rest yes, and you yeah. you use this encounter against someone who was an undead slayer who you know his 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 the, the character's prime purpose is to destroy undead and he's like why can't i just kill it yeah <laughs> this was this was way but it's, back it's, in the day. but it's a teaching and learning moment for and a oh, uh, moment for growth for a character who is like so so uh set on set on vengeance against the dead but here he got to actually do something better than be an agent of vengeance but to right right or wrong and fix yeah. a problem um, the, do, and do something meaningful it was it was absolutely a you know a, a growing moment for the character but as well as for the, the the player as well i i will i will never forget that session because I was that undead slayer. <laughs> <laughs> we um, we recently did a one shot uh, when we wanted to test out Matt Mercer's from Critical Role's uh, Witch Hunter. Yeah, uh, good and, build. And, and we uh, we ran a game with nothing but witch hunters uh, and one cleric. And the the premise. Now, he was of, not a PC. <laughs> he was a player character. He was not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the the premise was each of them received like this mysterious message, you know, basically say you know saying you know I'm your greatest enemy, blah blah. blah meet me at the cemetery, right? So I had this encounter at the cemetery, and 
what and I used the tombstones because he actually had prepared the tombstones with a ritual that they kind of went off in ascending order and and uh, in concentric circles. But but what it did was it it, it was uh, raising the dead and infusing them with necrotic energy. And at the same time, it was acting as a as a bane on the players. So like there were these two rituals that they had to break up in order to uh, make the encounter easier for them. Oh, there you we, go. Yeah, okay. so we were getting our asses handed to yeah. us. Well, yeah, because so actually there was three of them, right? There was one, there was one spell that was ongoing on top of this mausoleum in the center, and that was raising the dead. And then there was two other ones that were uh, bolstering the the dead in two different ways. Uh, you oh, know, nice. so okay, and, and so, but you know, everything was etched onto the tombstones. Oh wow! You know, so they yeah. had to figure out how to uh, break that up. And it, so that that leads. Um, so let me. I want to. I want to finish the the consecration desecration. Another one. Your player characters can come across a um, someone desecrating the grave, and that can go two ways. Totally standard. You guys have all run it before. You have a necromancer. He's going to pull the bodies out. We're just the ground. a grave robber, right? That was the second one, yeah. right? You could be like so traditional. You can have a necromancer. It's midnight. He's pulling up bodies out of the ground. He's going to use them as fighters, right? But I would agree with you. It's the it's the middle of the day. It, this is you know this cemetery's off you know a few, couple miles away from a village, and the dude's just literally just digging up a grave. That's a desecration of that grave. Now players might not recognize that, but it absolutely is. And so and and players, um, you know, then they have to determine, hey, are we going to let this guy just dig up this this dude's bones? Well, another and, yeah. fun way to yeah. go about it is, what if they start encountering these zombie like monsters that are. I, I'm, 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 amalgamations of different bodies right straight up right, frankenstein yeah. right and they have to go well where are they getting the bodies from that yeah. would lead you back to a, a cemetery yeah, so exactly so like you instead of starting at the cemetery you could start outside of it and have things that lead you yeah. back to well, it yeah. the the cemetery i think is one of the most um widely useful encounter locations because you can put anything along the role-playing spectrum into the, the positive side of it. You can put, you know, as, as you guys have said, you can put anything that you want on the negative side of it, and I'm certain that there's plenty more options that we haven't even discussed, but, you know, you can also go, like, middle of the road and have something that's just creepy or out of the ordinary. You know, wh what, what if you encounter that, that person who's the grave digger? And he's going about his day doing what grave diggers do, but he's an off person. He's someone that willingly has chosen the life of a grave digger, you know, someone that has no problems being in a cemetery all the time. There's something that's just off about him. And you could have a really cool role-playing encounter where the players have no idea whether there's something here that's a clue, and this guy is just creepy. Yeah, or, I see what you're it, saying. Yeah, it's it could a great be idea. that, or it could be that. <coughs> pardon me. Or it could be that you know he appears off, but after talking to him, you find out like, oh, he likes the graveyard because it's peaceful, it's quiet. He's doing, the, he's continuing to serve, you know, serve the community, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he feels like he's doing a great service and his duty by helping send these people to the next world or right. realm, yeah. and, and you know. So, like, you could you can have a duality to it so that your players, you know, they, through talking with him and interacting, they discover, oh, he's not really so creepy at all. He's actually a really good guy. Right. Yeah, you know, or you could go the other way and it could be really dark. Right. But yeah. it, it, it's just an opportunity to get some good role playing and introduce new characters into the game. Yes. Yeah. So, another one, and it kind of links off what you were talking about before. I really like the idea of a gravestone being a source for clues, right? So I had this idea for an adventure. So you have your player characters, they're heading toward a, they're heading just along a road and they're heading toward a town. Another group of adventurers come in the opposite way. They talk and they say, well, you know, we're leaving this town. Uh, we were searching for Greestheim's magical sword. And they're saying, well, why are you leaving? And I say, well, we looked for a week, we couldn't find it, right? And uh, they say, you know, we looked all over, uh, we had our wizard there and he tried to sense magical energies and he just couldn't find it, right? And so, you know, they, they go their opposite ways. The player characters keep going and they go across uh, a cemetery. They look in the cemetery, they look at some of the, um, some of the gravestones and it just lists um, someone's name and it says 
Miller. So they they were Miller. Or it says Grease Time, you know, hmm. Miller. And this is this guy's, you know, great grandfather or whatever. And uh, it says Grease Time. And it says Miller on the bottom, like he milled wheat, mm-hmm. right? So they go through the town, right? And the, they'll stay in the inn or whatever. And someone says, oh, that's that spot near the old mill, right? Which, of course, burned down decades ago, right? And then they can, and at that point, that's it. That's all you do. And they can continue on. But the sword is under that mill. And the fact that they read on the tombstone, he was a miller, Grease Time was a miller. You know, and, or and and that's or or that his grandfather was the sword is under that under the old mill, which doesn't exist anymore, and only by leading and leaving these clues. And I like the idea too that you can that your players could just sail through that town, never get that that sword, and it might be much later that they say, "Whoa," you know. But well, it's just a way to drop a clue. The, the other thing that you could do, um, if you have a non-essential story arc. And you know they're looking for clues uh, about you know ra- random NPC, and they get they get to the town where he's supposed to be, and you know then you find out okay well he is passed. So then some people will say okay well clearly the the trail is run run cold he's not around you know all all the places that he would be at are 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 not turning up anything. When in fact, if the players are willing to go that extra mile, it's buried with them. Yeah. So yeah. if they go, well, that brings me to another thing that I was thinking. Like when you're talking about consecration and desecration, what if something's integral to the plot of the story for for the players to achieve something, and they know it's buried with the person, and the only but the only way to get it is to desecrate the grave and take it. That's a great point. You know. Yeah. So then you have this this moral quandary. Yeah, or or maybe they go through a thing where they do some kind of speak with dead ritual, and they actually have to talk to him and bargain. Or oh, I love that! It's a great spell. and negotiate. Yeah, yeah. the I think uh, speak with dead is one of the best role playing games spell role playing spells. It really you know there, gives opportunity. Yes, yeah, so that that definitely does yeah. up the ante. Yeah, um, the I think the la- the last idea I had about gravestones was and uh, well. You guys can call me on this one because I know. So um, in your games, uh, magic items are, are fairly rare. In my games, they're extremely common, right? <laughs> and so I had the idea of um, the they're play- like pennies, like yeah, exactly. plus one daggers. No one even bothers to pick it up. Exactly. Uh, basically, in my games, I think there's a game of what are what goes on each slot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> basically, but the idea here would be um, they would come across a grave. And this is a, a fallen adventure, right? And you're exactly right. The item is a plus one dagger. And on that gravestone, left there instead of flowers, is a plus one dagger. And it was left there by another adventurer who rode all the way back, said, here's his grave. And for me, plus one dagger isn't a big deal. But I'm going to put this here to honor to honor this, de- this dead body. And just the way some, you know, like a, a biker would leave... You know, a bottle of uh, of Jack Daniels in a coffin, or you know, right next to the coffin. Here's a magical item, but it was clearly left there to honor that player. And then the player characters have to decide whether they're going to take it or not, or leave it. And then it goes back to that issue of desecration. That is, that is very rare because you know, yeah. generally when a, a character dies in the game, his body has not even hit the ground, and he's already been stripped of anything. Yeah, right? yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He would have wanted it this way. <laughs> yeah, it's just an idea. So, but it really it just brings out the idea of you know when when you're out and about and you see these different things in in our lives, you know they can pretty easily be converted into ideas for Dungeons and Dragons, and I think a lot of times the best ideas come from that. Because they, they feel kind of genuine and they kind of they have a link to our own worlds, but yeah, I think gravestones are a neat idea. For yeah, it's definitely great, great, uh, great set dressing for a campaign for a story. Uh, what do you guys think? Have you used uh, graveyards, uh, cemeteries, graves, uh, tombstones, any of that in your campaigns in different and interesting ways you'd like to share with us in the comments below? While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can tweet at us at Nerdarchy. Till next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.